Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. If you happen to be new, I'm truly grateful that you're here. And for everybody else, thanks for coming back. If you've been around for a while, you know we've been breeding some baby vampire crabs. And well, those babies are no longer babies. They are full grown, sexually mature adults, most of which have been sold. But I have decided to keep one breeding set. So one male and two females. So we need to get them into something better than this small little container that we actually raised them in. The other day we were out at PetSmart looking for some supplies and I came across this right here. Now this is designed fully for a turtle or something of that nature, but we're going to see if we can build an epic vampire crab set up inside of this tub. As you can see here, it has multiple different sections to separate the water and the land mass, which will give us the ability to create a nice drainage layer in the land side, build up a nice terrestrial forest type area for these crabs, giving them full access to a fresh water source as well. So with that guys, let's go ahead and get into this video today. The first thing that we need to do is go ahead and clean out this tub. Now I use Dawn dish soap, the regular blue kind. I just put a couple of drops right here on the end of my hose and then I'm going to attach the nozzle to it. This will allow me to spray a perfect amount of soap out on top of this plastic tub. Now a lot of people say you shouldn't use anything to clean. Well, I kind of disagree. I've been using this blue Dawn to clean every plastic bin enclosure I have ever put together and it is completely safe as long as you get all of the soap residue off and it does a perfect job of removing all of the harsh chemicals off of the plastic and I promise you the harsh chemicals from the plastic are much worse for anything you put in here than any residue from this soap Well, now that we have it completely cleaned out, it's time to go ahead and start putting this thing together. We're gonna start in this little section right here by adding some gravel to the bottom. This will become our drainage layer. This will allow for evaporation and condensation to occur within this enclosure. This will provide enough moisture for the plants, for the soil, for the crabs, the isopods, the springtails, and every other living organism within this setup. We're also gonna add this gravel to the bottom of the aquatic section just as a substrate as well. And now to finish the drainage layer, we're going to take this black weed barrier and place it right over the gravel, which will provide a separation between the substrate and this gravel, allowing water to flow through. So let's go put together some terrarium mix. This mix will consist of some Jiffy organic seed starter mix, which is mostly cocoa core, as well as some sphagnum moss. We'll add a little bit of cypress mulch. This will all help keep the moisture up in this enclosure as well as give it a very naturalistic foresty look. And finally we'll add just a little bit of sand. I actually got this recipe for a terrarium mix from Serpa Designs channel so if you would like to see how to make this you can actually check that out on his channel. Make sure you use dechlorinated water to mix your soil together. I always use just a little bit of tank water because the nitrates in it will help the plants grow. Now that we have our terrarium mix finished, let's go ahead and finish this terrestrial area. Now that the terrestrial area is full of this terrarium mix, let's go ahead and plant it. I'm going to be using a multitude of different plants that I've grown inside of terrariums in the fish room. Things like a rabbit's foot fern, a pink vein plant, and a couple of other things like mondo grass, and some plants I'm not sure of the name, so if you happen to know the name of these plants, make sure you comment below.
Let's add a golden pothos to this. This will grow over into the water, allowing a space for these crabs to crawl up into the landmass. And now to just finish it with some finer detail, just to give it a nice aesthetic and a nice foresty look. Now we're gonna add a big piece of cork right along the bank of this terrestrial area where it falls over into the water. This will be a perfect place for these vampire crabs, isopods, and springtails to hide and stay hydrated. This cork will hold all kinds of moisture and it's perfect for this setup. Now we're gonna add some moss elements. This is Christmas moss and this will be placed right up under this cork. It'll allow it to hang into the water and maintain moisture. This will be perfect for a climb for the crabs as well as food as they will eat it. And now we need to focus on the aquatic section. So we've moved this container to its permanent location. And we're gonna start by adding a sponge filter. The sponge filter along with all the aquatic plants are available for sale at freshwaterscrub.com. Use the code CRAB for 10% off all of your orders until the last day of the month. And now it's time just to fill this up with water. And now that we have water in here, let's go ahead and add some aquatic plants. We're going to start with this Reuben sword, which is a really cool sword that will do really well in this setup. We're also going to add some hornwort, a java fern, some duckweed, and some other things. Remember, visit freshwaterscrub.com and use the code CRAB for 10% off all your orders until the end of the month. So with all these plants in here, let's go ahead and get out and pick up some fish for this aquatic section. We're now back with fish, and the selection process proved to be quite difficult as we had to find something that would not eat baby vampire crabs if they happened to be born in here. Now to let these guys acclimate before we get them in here. We added two black mystery snails, two gold mystery snails, and about 10 of these red neocardinia shrimp. These shrimp are going to be fantastic in here and none of what we've put in here will actually mess with any baby vampire crabs if we happen to have any born. One of the other things I'm gonna do is go ahead and add a heater to this setup. This is just a flat heater. I use this in my shrimp setups and we're just gonna sit this thing like right in here, suction it cup right to the wall and that will provide plenty of heat for this water. The vampire crab babies are gonna need warmer water as well and I just wanna make sure that we have this water warm enough. It's currently warm enough for these shrimp but it's gonna get colder and I don't wanna lose any of these guys. I need to go ahead and wet this down. So what I'm going to use is my sprayer with some RODI water and I want to get this really saturated. There is a drainage layer in here. Vampire crabs are amazing climbers so we need to go ahead and trim this guy right here down which is fine. That thing will survive. I've trimmed it many times. That keeps them off of the side and keeps them from being able to climb out of this container. Now granted this container will have a top on it but still we don't want anything coming up and actually making it out of the top of this. Alright guys well with that we have two more things to add to this before we add our baby vampire crabs. So let's go ahead and get that in here now. So we're adding some orange isopods as well as quite a bit of dirt that has springtails in it. So both the isopods and springtails will breed in here, making this a complete bioactive setup. We're going to add a couple of elements from the small grow out bin enclosure that these crabs were grown in. We're going to add these two small pieces of wood. First, because they are covered in beneficial bacteria, and second, these crabs know this wood. Whether it's the scent, the taste, whatever it may be, it'll make it feel like home to them. And now, it's time to add the crabs.
All right, guys, well, this thing is completely done. All of our shrimp are in here, all of our mystery snails, our little vampire crabs, but everything in here is done. Also, remember, all this duckweed, our java fern, this robin sword, the hornwort, even the Christmas moss that we put down inside here, as well as the sponge filter, all of this is for sale at freshwaterscrub.com. Make sure you use the code CRAB for 10% off all your orders. Guys, did you see the video that I put out the other day where we are breeding our axolotls? This is the setup from that video. If you have not seen that video, make sure you go watch it because it's gonna lead you into our next video that you're not gonna wanna miss. There's a huge surprise in here. You can't see it because, well, you just can't. But there's a huge surprise in here coming in the next video. So make sure you go watch this one. There is a link in the card right above. All right, guys. Well, with that, hopefully you went on to enjoy this video. Hopefully you're enjoying the content. If you have not subscribed, make sure you go ahead and do that, as well as follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Links to both are down below. But with that, I really appreciate all of you sticking around and watching my videos. Thank you so very much. And hey, we will see you next time.